Good morning, friends. Good morning, everybody. It's so good to be in your lounge. Your coffee is fantastic. <laughs> I was so delighted to go out on Friday, Friday morning and we went for a cycle. And then when we came back, we took our dog for a walk. And um, while riding and while walking, there was not one person that did not greet me friendly. And I could see the joy in their eyes being able to exercise beyond the boundaries of their four walls. But even more delighted than the people I saw was the dogs. Their tails were wagging and their paws were running. <laughs> <laughs> um, at the glance of freedom they had between six and nine. Um, friends, I want to encourage you. As the writer to Hebrews writes in Hebrews 10, he wrote, And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another even more so as we see the day of Christ approaching. I want to encourage you. Would you do everything in your ability to be part of this local church, to um, dial in online and to participate in our Sunday services? Kids, I want to encourage you. There will be something for you every Sunday. Just check out our YouTube channel. Okay. And then I'm so thankful and I'm standing in awe. Of what God is doing and thanking every member of Beacon Church as you are generously and faithfully giving towards your tithes and offerings and towards the COVID-19 relief fund. As a church we are able, we have been able to assist 65 families with food parcels, we've been able to bless families with vouchers to families 75 families with food uh, with meals and then in the month of may we want on a weekly basis um, provide for 30 families and we are i'm i'm standing in amazement that even people from outside the church is bringing generous donations that we can distribute inside the community we are delighted to work with other churches in Langebaan, with Team Langebaan and with the Soldano Bay Disaster Relief Fund. These guys are doing excellent work. And I know together we will see this COVID-19 through. I want to plead with you. If you are someone that is in need of food, would you SMS your name, your ID number and your address to this number? And then if you'd like to give towards the relief fund please go to our website our banking details is there and you may just mark your payment COVID-19 and then if you might have some emotional need or spiritual need and you would just like someone to speak to you pray with you just counsel you a bit please we have a great team of counselors who would love to be of service in this time we do not have to go through this alone we are a family together. And I was reminded in Matthew 4 verse 4 that even though we have all these needs and we are hungry for food, you know what? When Jesus was in the wilderness and the devil was tempting him and telling him, turn the rocks into food, into bread because he's hungry. This is what Jesus said. <clears throat> And Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And in this time, this has been really something that's become so alive for me. We eat bread and we need bread <clears throat> and we give out bread to sustain and, and, and to feel full every day. But this gift that we got in the word of God, this is our bread. This is our spiritual bread that Jesus was referring to because he, know, he knew and he knows that the word of God can sustain our souls like nothing else. And I want to encourage us all 
let's eat from this bread. Let's eat from the living bread of life, the word of God every day, just as we eat bread every day in our house, mm. at least. You know, it's easy to quickly pick up your Bible when you have a need or you're scared or you're joyful. But every day, let's get into a good discipline of, of eating the bread of life every day. Let's close our eyes. Father God, you are the creator of heaven and earth. You are Alpha Omega. Father, you are the one, the living bread that sustains us. Lord God, I pray as we humbly come to your throne today. Father God, that you will meet us today in your word. That you will speak to us through your word. Father God, that you will fill us, that you will sustain us. Lord, I pray that we will have this hunger every day for more and more of your word. Lord God, thank you that your grace for each one of us is enough for every day. Lord God, thank you that we can be thankful, that we can gather on this day and just declare that you are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Thank you that we can praise you, that we can raise our hallelujah. And Father God, I just pray that you will bless us. As the word is delivered through teaching this morning, I pray, Lord, that it will be like a sh sharp-edged sword, Father. That it will penetrate through bone and marrow, that it will go into our souls. Father, that your word will be truth and it will be spoken, Father, with truth, Lord. Lord, I pray that the hearts hearing this message this morning will be soft and that we will receive what you want to, that you want to sow this morning. Bless thee, O Lord, and Father God, thank you that we can just praise your holy name. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Friends, would you stand up and join us as we sing this song as a proclamation and a declaration. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a Hallelujah Heaven comes to fight
Welcome this morning. A book's got two covers. You've got a front cover and you've got a back cover. And, and in between, you find a story and what it's all about. It's almost like your life and my life. There's a beginning, there's a front cover, and there's an end cover. Or maybe not. Because when you read the most important book in life, the Bible, you will find that there's a beginning, but when you get to the end, you find out it's, it's not really the end, it's, it's only the end of the beginning. And we find out that your and my life does not end at death the way we were thinking. And so when you open up God's Word, may I highlight a few verses to you to just give a, a brief summary of the story of the Bible. In Genesis 1, chapter 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And then we find the account of God creating the sea and the animals and all the fish, etc. And then in verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. And then when you think you get to the end of the story, no, you find out something is, is different. No, the story does not end. In fact, the story is continuing in all eternity. In Revelation 21, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and He will live with them. They will be His people, and God Himself will be with them and be their God. And then... If we just rewind a little bit to the back, we find Peter writing to a whole group of churches the following. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, he says, But in keeping with his promise, he's writing to Christ followers, and he's saying to Christ followers, in keeping with the promise and all the promises of God that we find in the Bible, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the, earth, the home of righteousness. So Peter is reminding us that there is a looking forward. There is an anticipation of something. And that something is a new heaven and a new earth. Even in Colossians 3, God commands us through the pen of Paul, set your hearts, set your minds on the things above and not, and not on the things on this earth. No, set our minds. There's the command. And so this morning, we start a new preaching series. Eternity changes everything. Eternity changes everything. And God commands us to set our hearts and our minds on the things above. In this series, we will see how God leads us and guides us through His Word, how the promises of His Word leads us, and how He encourages us and commands us to envision a new heaven and a new earth. And no matter how different we may view or interpret the millennium found in Revelation 20, we can still embrace a common theology of the new earth and the new heavens our ultimate destination. Eternity changes everything. And if we have an understanding of our ultimate destiny, friends, if you have an understanding where you are going, where you are headed to, where you are going to spend eternity, it will change our living right here, right now. We will live with a different mindset. We'll live with a different mentality. Eternity changes everything. But before we double click on that statement in the weeks to come during this series, I want to ask you the following question this morning. What do you think the Bible is all about? I'm sure there are plenty of answers. I don't know what your answer is, but let me say at least five things what the Bible is not about. 
Five things that the Bible is not about. The Bible is not a collection of sacred religious thinking and philosophy. The Bible is not a DIY book of how to solve human problems, human problems and corresponding human solutions. The Bible is not a, a history book of how religion started and how religion developed over the years. Neither is the Bible a rule book for how Christians should live and how they should apply morality to life. The Bible is not a collection of religious short stories of men and women that made good decisions and bad decisions. Okay, but what is the Bible about then? Well, I'm so glad you asked that question. Because the Bible is really from cover to cover. From cover to cover, one story. It's one story, and that's how we should read the Bible from the beginning to the end as one story. It is this most amazing, radical, hope-giving, destiny-changing book. It's the best book that you will ever read. It's at the same time a radical, honest, and hopeful book. The Bible is the only book that tells you and me the truth about eternity. And it tells you and me that there is a sovereign God. There is a sovereign creator who created the universe and sustains the universe by his power and by his purpose. And that he created human beings in his likeness, in his image. And that God placed eternity in our hearts. And so, friends, the greatest pandemic ever since the start of creation is not COVID-19. It's not even the Spanish flu. It's not even World War II. With all respect, what great pandemic and human suffering these things brought over the years. And I'm not saying it's, it's not a pandemic and it's, it's not a real pandemic fear and challenge for people no but what COVID-19 came to do to underline to highlight to put uh, uh, under the spotlight so to speak is again the one thing that you and I cannot escape death facing the reality of COVID-19 just underlines again this one thing. It, it underlines and brings to the surface in the heart of many people the fear of death. It brings to the surface uncertainty. It brings to the surface the question, what is on the other side? What, what, what lies behind death? And so the one thing you and I need to understand is that the Bible tells you and me that death has never been part of the original plan of God. But life for eternity is, plan of, is part of God's eternal plan. But now the, the result of one tragic decision, one tragic the decision that was made, changed this whole trajectory of human life, so to speak. Adam and Eve, the first man and woman that God created, made a tragic choice. They made this tragic decision there in the Garden of Eden. They, they made this decision to go against who God, uh, who God created them to be and, and how they were supposed to live. In a moment of deception and focusing just on the pleasure of, of the here and the now, they took the counsel of the devil, they forgot about eternity, and they stepped over the boundary, and they wanted to be God instead of being with God forever. And though that temporary moment of eating from the forbidden fruit they thought is going to give them independence and that moment is going to going to uh, take them out of the restrictive so to speak restrictive boundaries of living independence on God but that was a lie it was a deception because you and I we've been created to live independence on God and so to live in independence it or it is act that is actually restrictive to live in dependence on God is not restrictive. And so the Bible has got a name for what Adam and Eve did. It's called sin. 
their sin infected and affected the whole human race. The same way that COVID-19 infects and affects everyone on this planet. But the Bible tells you and me that sin is more than just wrong behavior. Sin is actually the attitude of our hearts. It is the motive, the condition of the human heart that results into wrong behavior. And sin is, is actually the reason that you and I lost eternity. There where God created us to be in, a, in an eternal relationship with Him. In between came sin and in between the result of sin, death. And we can maybe say death hijacked our eternal peaceful relationship and being in right standing with our Creator. And we find ourselves in this dilemma. But God Himself came to the rescue. He came to the rescue in the person of Jesus Christ. And so we find that Jesus is at the center of the Bible. Jesus is the hero of the story. It is, it is all about Jesus. Jesus coming to earth to rescue you and me has always been part of God's plan before the foundation of this world. God sent His only Son to this earth, born of a virgin, living a perfect life, dying a sacrificial death to defeat sin and death and the devil on your and my behalf. Yes, and then physically rose from the dead, appeared to his disciples and over 500 eyewitnesses, ascended into heaven and giving you and me the promise that he's coming back again. And when he comes back again, there will be a judgment, a judgment of the righteous and the unrighteous. And then Christ will bring in the, the new heavens and the new earth. And then we will experience eternity, an eternal relationship with Jesus Christ forever and ever. And so friends, the gift of eternal life and a restored relationship and a right standing with our Creator is available through faith and by grace to everyone who puts his or her trust in Jesus, who calls upon the name of Jesus Christ and trust in His finished work on their behalf. Not because you and I did something, not because you and I deserve this, but because of God's unconditional love and because of His mercy. Have you acknowledged Jesus Christ as the only God and Savior of your life, as the only Lord of your life? Are you following Jesus Christ as the only God and Savior? Or do you just hold on to Him through your mind? Is it just some kind of thinking? Is it just a get out of jail card? But do you truly follow Him and trust Him as the only God and Savior? The Bible says, all who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. We will be rescued from this deadly peril, from e eternal separation from God. Paul writes, to the church in Rome and he says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord that he is the only God and Savior you will be saved you will be in right standing with God and so I want to invite you if you are unsure and you're watching this message this morning at the end of the sermon we will have a link to a 30-day devotional about Jesus discovering for yourself who Jesus is if you might not be able to follow that I invite you to go to our website, beacon.org.za, and follow this link on this daily devotion about who Jesus is. And for the parents out there, there's another link to help your children and to guide them into a relationship with Jesus. A study guide, a devotional called In Reach. So follow that and be part of that. But friends, maybe this lockdown period, you... Maybe you came to, to realize that, wow, the, the, the busyness of life and, and all the things you planned for and all the things you worked so hard to achieve, and they never resulted in the peace and the joy and the rest that you anticipated. You've longed for, for that rest and the peace and the joy, and you've just really hoped that, that your hard work and the things that you want to achieve 
those things, the, the temporary things on this earth, that, that's going to bring peace and joy and rest. Maybe you've realized that there must be more to life, to sh this short life on this temporary messed up broken world. Maybe you've come to that realization during this lockdown period. Well, I think that's a great conclusion to come to. And that's what we want to address during this series. Eternity changes everything. That life is not all about life on this little messed up broken earth. No, but there's a wonderful promise. There's a creator that gives you and me the promise of a new heavens and a new earth. And if this is maybe you that came to this realization this morning, I want to say to you that there is hope. That the God of glorious grace is bringing you hope. That He is the center of the universe. That He sustains the universe and your life and my life by His power and His grace. And that in Jesus Christ there is hope. Not only for today, but there is eternal hope. Because He's a God of grace. By His unmerited favor, by His mercy, His unconditional love, He offers you and me peace, joy, eternal security, an eternal secured future, an eternal future with Him. The death won't be the end. It is only the end of the beginning. And so, friends, the Bible is, is the only real legitimate source to explain the human race, to explain the origin of the human race. And, and how did we find ourselves in the mess that we are in at the moment? And that Jesus came, so to speak, to fix this mess in our place, on our behalf, for our good, for His glory and for His purpose. And the Bible is the only truth explaining to you and me where not only all of the universe is marching to towards a climax, but where your life and my life is marching towards. There's, there's a secured future. We are heading somewhere. So friends, I want to end off this morning and, and asking you, does the thought of eternity excite you? Or maybe does it scare you? Or maybe you might say this morning, Ah, I am completely ignorant about eternity. It's just, you know, everything that the Bible says about the origin of, of, the, of, of the earth and the human race and, and what is wrong with us and where we're headed to and how Jesus is the solution, the answer to everything. Ah, I think it's a fairy tale. And, and, and maybe you're completely ignorant of your future, your destiny, and the destiny of the whole world, if that is you, and even if you're excited about eternity, and even if you have some questions, no matter where you fall into whatever category, may I invite you to continue to join us online for the weeks to come. And I pray that Jesus Christ Himself will reveal Himself to you, that He will come and He will settle the truth in your heart. He will settle the truth in your heart and in your mind. May I invite you to pray with me. Sovereign Lord, for those who follow Jesus Christ as the only God and Savior, we have such a wonderful privilege to call the one and only sovereign creator of the universe, Abba Father. And Lord, when we utter those words, Abba Father, it brings such a peace and confidence and joy to our hearts, such an eternal, secure future, that you are a good, loving, eternal Father. Thank you for your wonderful promises. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will help each and every one following these online series, that you will guide and lead them to the ultimate truth written down in your word. You will bring revelation, illumination, Holy Spirit. You will settle it in the hearts and minds of people. And thank you 
that we can have a great vision of a new heavens and a new earth. And that we will be with you forever, Jesus, and we will see you face to face. Thank you for that wonderful promise, Jesus. In your mighty name, we pray that. Amen. I want to invite you, friends, to just maybe prayerfully listen and meditate upon the words of the next song. And then there's another song following after that. And maybe you want to sing along. So please do follow our links to those studies. Uh, you can find it uh, after this message. You can also find it on beacon.org.za. Uh, may you have a blessed week and know that eternity changes everything. Because there is an eternal God and His name is Jesus Christ and you have an eternal destiny with Him. God bless and a wonderful day. Finding myself at a loss for words And the funny thing is, it's okay The last thing I need is to be heard But to hear what you would say Word of God speak would you pour down like rain Washing my eyes to see Your majesty To be still and know That you're in this place Please let me stay and rest In your holiness Word of God speak Finding myself in the midst of you Beyond the music, beyond the noise All that I need is to be with you And in the quiet, hear your voice Word of God speak you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay. So oh.